Oh, to know the sweetness of the light. Oh, to know the higher octaves. When you think of Astraea, you think of the cosmic circle and sword of blue flame. You hear the buzzing sound as the concrete is disturbed and pulverized. You think of intense action, and you think of the puncturing of unreality. Yet the sweetness of the light that descends when all of the debris loosened by Astraea is cast into the violet flame. Then you know the sweetness of the light. Then you have and hold in your heart a compartment of heaven, your heaven world, an element of your causal body of light to establish then the love tie to the great Dharmakaya that once you shall call your own, once you have called your own, and shall again. There must be the sustaining matrix of the circle and sword of blue flame, the action of Astraea that you have invoked over the centuries and specifically in this activity has brought you to the place of a great opening, an opening whereby you may touch then certain portions of your causal body, but this only when you approach it through your Christ intelligence, your Christ mind. For that mind of Christ is a barrier to the penetration of any and all worlds of perfection until you yourself are duly and properly cloaked in that perfection. Do not so easily cast aside my remarks, for I come, the Elohim purity, I come, Astraea, we are one in the fusion of a cosmos, for God is one, Father, Mother is one, and the dot in the center of the circle must be the man-child. So then, do not say to yourself these words are not relevant to me, for I am so far from perfection this day. Perfection relates to you, and you relate to it, but only when you allow us to strip you of that sense of non-perfection, that sense of mortality. Think then upon the purity of the Lamb of God who has been slain from the foundation of the world. This Lamb is truly your real self in Christ. This Lamb within you then is slain daily and hourly. Yet you have discovered by the tube of light and the violet flame the calls to Astraea and Archangel Michael that are, you are able to maintain within your tube of light some of the glory of God and the glory of the Lord Christ descending in clouds of glory. For that connection is sustained when you sustain the tube of light. And so you have created here below your heaven world within that tube of light and within the violet flame and within your contemplation of the Buddhas, saints, bodhisattvas, and sages who have walked before you and yet still walk behind you as a guardian action. For the whole world and cosmos is a grand processioning to the great central sun. 
And as the whirlwind action of Astraea does descend upon you, so you are delivered of many burdens that you will not see again. For the violet flame you have invoked has compensated for all that that has come to the service to be taken by millions of legions of Astraea. What then are these legions like? They are everyday working folk angels, yes, indeed. They work hard in the streets of matter. They work in the streets of the earth, your street, your hometown, your nation. And they work to bind the most vicious of dark forces who have been allowed in to the planetary home from sub-levels of the astral plane and out of the pits of death and hell to torment the youth and tear down this civilization, to tear down this system of education and all that has been built by many hearts of love. Blessed ones, by your calls to Astraea daily, you are assisting in the purging of the earth of the most virulent and the most vile forces that could attack the human brain, mind, heart, body, soul, and spirit. Your calls, beloved, put in motion shock troops who go forth to rescue this and that little one, millions here and other hundred thousands there from calamities that otherwise should have long ago fallen upon the earth. Yes, you are in the days and hours of mitigation, mitigation of certain prophecies. You are in the days and hours of selection, whereby even the four horsemen come and do select situations, individuals, towns, and cities where there has not been a relenting in the stubbornness, the stubborn will of the people as they have raised their arms and their outcries against their God. Thus karma does descend specifically and selectively. And then again, the specific selection may be an entire planetary body, so intermeshed is the karma of the nations. Therefore, you cannot remain insulated as a nation, but must take into account that that which happens in every nation upon earth and in every heart of the earth, in every heart of every person in the earth, beloved ones, does result in a descent of a certain burden upon every life stream upon earth. Those then who are able to carry their own cross of karma and then some are called upon again and again to carry some of that portion of world karma as it is the, to the benefit of the billions of Earth's evolutions, so it is to the benefit of the individual. For in some things, the entire planetary home is as a woven blanket, and all of the threads that are interwoven represent all of the karmas of all of the peoples of the Earth. Thus, when a section of the Earth goes down beneath the weight of their karma, so the entire tent does go down. See how the economies of the nations are tied together. See how deadly diseases know no bounds, but skip from continent to continent, as in the situation of AIDS, which you find the focus of your prayer vigil. So there is also a planetary depression which you must understand, for that depression is such a weight upon so many people that it does come and rest upon the light bearers themselves. And when they feel this depression, when you feel it, beloved ones, you think it is your own, you think it is your circumstances, your job, your situation, your service. You think if you change all these things that somehow this weight will be removed from you. Well, I tell you, it will not be removed from you except by the violet flame, except by the call to Astraea, except by appealing to the sacred heart, the immaculate heart, the diamond heart, the magnanimous heart, the heart of Buddha Maitreya and the Dhyani Buddhas, the heart, purple fiery heart. 
Act of Saint Germain. So, beloved ones, there is no getting out of this earth without boring through the many layers of the weight of world depression until finally through that thick layer of oppressive cloud and weight of dampness, you arrive at that point of the blue sky and the sun and the heaven world is before you. And as you squint your eyes, you see the rainbow round the sun and the corona of the sun and and you know that you have created a channel and you can keep that channel open daily whereby not only yourself but many angels of the Lord may ascend and descend even as they did on Jacob's ladder that ladder marking the initiations of the path for every son and daughter of God as you have given your calls to Astraea and to me this day, some has been accomplished, but you must become used to a sense of co-measurement, a sense of co-measurement that the darkness that is darkening in the earth simply requires more fire hoses of water pouring forth the mighty power of Astraea and all Elohim for the consuming of these things that are coming to the surface. It is as though the entire body of the earth had marks releasing pus and diseases and all torments and putrefaction and stultification and all manner of foul odors that come out of the pit and the astral plane. And you are protected from these by your servants, the mighty sylphs of the air, the fiery salamanders, the gnomes and the undines, who do their part daily for the purification of the planet. Yet as you have been told before, they cannot keep up with the challenge of the spewing out of the anger, the hate and hate creation, and all that is in the very boiler of the unconscious coming to the surface almost as a cauldron ready to overflow and a cauldron with such a hot concoction of poisonous substance that it should burst into flame and ignite many lower levels of the astral plane. This earth then, at inner levels, is not shown to you that you might retain hope, that you might yet have the vision of the heaven world, that you might understand that the goal which you are pursuing, which is the balancing of 51% of this, of your karma, is reached when it is reached, beloved, this level brings you to the place of choices, the choice to embody that light of the living Christ or not. To move forward then for the balancing of 49% is the next goal on the passageway through earth. You then must come to a reckoning within yourself that each new level of attainment brings a new aggression of fallen angels who seek to tear from you that attainment. You ought to put yourself in the mode of the greatest athletes, those who have won in the Olympics, and you ought to see yourself in becoming the fullness of that Christhood, in entering in to the configuration of the Lamb of God that you will face as you increase your light, challengers to your sport, your sport being the spiritual path itself. So you must increase your training and your preparation. You must increase your determination and your will. You must seek empowerment from the source of empowerment, your own holy Christ self. And it becomes, therefore, a competition in sports. Who will win the challenger to you, the unchallenged one? Or will you let down your guard or say, it is not worth it anymore. It's simply not worth it. How many times have we heard some say this? It is not worth it. What is not worth it? Your Christhood? Is that what you are speaking of? The inconveniences of life and the path that do not begin and end at the Royal Teton Ranch, but continue round the world and round the world and round again? 
Is it worth it, or is it not, beloved, to become a God-free being and to do what it takes to get there? Is it worth it, or is it not, to receive a spanking today from Astraea and Purity, the spoiled children, the spoiled adults who have been spoiled by their parents, and now are petulant children complaining that it is too hard? Well, you might as well face the reality for it will get harder and harder, eliminating those who have no nerve for the fight, no love for the outcome, no concern for those who suffer and might be healed because they might sacrifice something to put on the mantle of Christhood. Blessed ones, this is an indulgent civilization, and we see that even where parents have not indulged their children, their children have definitely managed to indulge themselves. Now their children are 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 years old, and yet they say it is too hard, and they desire to continue the merry-go-round of self-indulgences. Well, I refer you instead to the giant flame of God harmony, to the victory of Serapis Bay, to the victory of the base of the spine chakra, whereby in the raising up of that light you can feel the fire rising and burning and consuming the dross whereby then we may place along that spinal altar the beginning of ascension's flame. How well we remember the dictation given announcing that that ascension flame began to rise, began to rise in the messenger Mark Prophet, and did contain, therefore, the legs, the feet and the legs beginning only to increase and increase and increase until the hour of the transition of the soul from a body no longer able to contain the light that he bore did take its leave. And that soul did merge with a living Christ and the living God. And this, an individual who was a human being and more than a human being, a soul seized and possessed wholly with the mission of Godhood for you and for all and lastly for himself. Yes, beloved ones, and how did he rise up not being coddled and spoiled, but coming into the realities of the depression and the loss of his own father by death, and therefore having to make his way as an individual, as a sole provider for his mother, moving forward then and taking his position in the United States Air Force and standing for the victory of St. Germain in America. Yes, beloved, heroes are made of that stuff of children who have grown up deprived of all of the luxuries and all of the toys and all of the enjoyments with which children today are surfeited until they expect even Serapis Bay to come and place in their laps all of their needs and wants, for they themselves have hardly, scarcely raised an arm or a hand or a finger to do anything for themselves. Such is the indulgence of parents passed on to children, and who then, who shall inherit the earth, the indulgent ones or those those who march with Serapis Bay and understand that ascensions must take place day by day. And when you shall have ascended, because you have seen through all of this and stripped yourself of the meowing and mewing and crying and weeping, and have come to the place where you have said, I will give this life. I will give this life, and I am not afraid of pain. I am not afraid of what it will cost me, for what is pain in this life but only a chimera, a shadow that passes away, and the glory of God descends. And this glory I can reach out, I can touch, I can feel, I can bring down, I can become, and I can show to the world by the fire of my chakras. And this is the person I desire to be, and not one who is merely a bag of a million excuses. Well, that is not the bag that 
is carried by the very special Buddha, by the very special Guru, beloved ones. So understand uh, that this bag must contain all of the formulas of alchemy that you have memorized, all that is required to defeat those individuals who one way or another would take from you your life for a life force and your very heart's love and heart's calling. I tell you, beloved ones, it does take maximum alertness on your part to escape all of the plots and ploys that come upon you by minor puny devils to take you from your course. It is about time you did pass every test and not one now and then. It is about time that you shrugged from yourself as Atlas shrugging all of the sense of a self that is not God. No greater sin has ever been committed by mankind or anyone than the sin of the denial of God where you stand, of God as who you are, what you are, and what you are made of. That denial comes each and every time there spews forth not only from your mouth, but from your other chakras of that negativity, of that heavy spiral of negativity, and you do not care who it touches or who it does rest upon or who, who can barely breathe and is on his last breath lying on a bed of pain. You do not care that the negativity that goes forth from your mouth and your solar plexus may be the very negativity that allows that one to pass on when your own positive force and driving momentum of the spirit could also have been that one's resurrection. You are not an island. You are not separated out from the rest. You cannot divide yourself from the body of God unless you wish to quit it permanently. And if you do, beloved ones, you need only petition the Lord Christ, and in deepest love he will allow you to separate yourself out, that you might experience outer darkness for a time, and begin to appreciate the light and what you had before you began to misuse it in small ways and in great ways, thinking you are above the law, allowing the lies of the fallen ones to come in and tell you, a little bit here and a little bit there will not matter. Cheat a little here, cheat a little there, and pretty soon you have so many holes pricked in the aura of being that you are a leaky vessel, leaking from every point, and finally the vessel sinks and you cannot swim. You cannot swim in that sea of the astral plane, and you too are taken under with that perilous vessel. Blessed ones, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a child. There is a way that seemeth right, and the way that seemeth right is the way of self-indulgence. And that self-indulgence is daily being justified by those on the spiritual path who in previous lifetimes have known some of the present ascended masters as your parents, as your teachers, and you have been given a classical education and upbringing according to the teachings of the Great White Brotherhood. And you have reached a certain level of mastery, a certain level of inner containment, and contentment and God happiness. So, beloved, you cannot take the failings of this life or the karma of this life as an excuse for non-victory. For in many past ages, you have indeed lived in ideal situations, in ideal families with ideal parents. Therefore, let us get on with casting all of that into the flame. Let us get on with a call to Astraea, and let that call to Astraea to take from you those records be a part of every therapy session and in every circle of those who come together to ponder the meaning of their burdens. We can ponder the burdens today, we can ponder them tomorrow and the next day and every day of the year, and we can continue this for centuries. I say, when will you say, 
this day I have gotten the victory over this beast, this pain, this persecution, and I will not take three steps backward when my Lord, crucified on Calgary this day, does place himself upon that cross before me. No, I will not step one step backward. I will step forward. I will receive my Lord. I will take him down from the cross, and I will place myself upon that cross, for I know that at any time, any point in earth, there must be one Son of God who is enduring that crucifixion, who is on that cross. And therefore know this, this is the teaching of this Good Friday, 1993. You must take your turn. You must take your turn. And if you say, no, I must not, I go the other way, and I back off, as though none will see me to some corner where I may hide behind the rocks and in the caves, lest the mountains fall upon me. Well, you may do that. It is your free will, and it is our free will to tell you it is the wrong choice at the wrong time in all of the cosmic history of planet Earth. This is the time to kneel before the cosmic cross of white fire and to remember the crown is at the top. And if you endure your initiations, that crown shall also be yours, and you will sit with Christ in glory and know all the promises of Scripture. Now is not the time to falter. Now is not the time for that state of mind that says, well, maybe, well, maybe, and then look askance and say, that was 2,000 years ago. There are no more deaths by crucifixion today. Well, I tell you, indeed, there are. Just look at those who are dying of AIDS. Look at them as though the body of Christ emaciated and their eyes glassy, and there they lie in pain. Look at many who die of other diseases. Look at many who are so burdened by their karmas. You see, you either arrive at the cross, you either arrive at Golgotha by the power of your individual Christhood, or you are alive and you do not accomplish the victory of the crucifixion, though you go through it anyway. And so that crucifixion of such horrible deaths which people go through, what is taking place? The dweller is in command, for they have not slain that dweller, but preferred to dance with it, to play ring around a rosy with that dweller, to be entertained for a time, and then ultimately gobbled up by the dweller. And where shall they appear? Where shall they appear in the day of salvation when they have nothing of a Christhood formed, nothing of a soul that can say, I, and then say, I, I am, and then say, I am that I am. Can your soul truly say that because you have allowed yourself to be devoured by the living flame of love of the Holy Spirit? Or can you only say, I have been devoured of my addictions, my alcohol, my drugs, my indulgences, my selfishness, and there is no point of identity left that can be saved or rescued by a strength or anyone because you have taken too long to indulge your free will and now there is not a thing that can be done for you for that indulgence has turned in upon you to devour you as the cancer of selfishness and self-love. I am Astraea, I am purity, I come in that hour, and I let that cosmic circle and sword of the flame spin, and it does spin, and it does draw off of that which was once a living soul, all negative energy, all karma, and is there anything left? No, there is not even a period 
at the end of the sentence of that life whereby that soul could be restored. Do you not understand that there are cycles and time ordained even unto the fallen angels, the high and the mighty ones, the princes of this world? They are given a time and certain times and times again, but the day and the hour does come when these high and mighty ones who have lorded it over the humble and meek, they do come to their end, and suddenly there is by the cosmic timetable of the clock that does not cease to tick. There is that cessation, there is that collapsing of the entire structure, and the only difference between the high and the mighty and the fallen angels and you is that they know their time is short. You seem to have forgotten that your time is also short. Their time is short. They seek to devour you, and then they have your full cooperation as you allow yourself to be devoured once again by your attention here, your attention there, taking in the scenes of the world and every last movie that you can rent and see, lest you might miss something out of the astral plane that has escaped you lest you are not in tune with the times and cannot be conversant with all of the mountain of rubbish that is piled up in the astral bodies of the people of this world. I am Astraea. Shall I continually clean up the mess daily? It is very convenient to have my call, is it not? Is it not convenient that each and every day the garbage collector will come, all of my legions, my working angels, will come to clean up the mess? Well, they are desirous of getting to the very core of the foundations of unreality upon which you have built a superstructure of your ego which is about to collapse any moment. And you must understand you have no other moment but the eternal now. Thus the fallen ones know that they shall be no more, and they do as much deviltry as they can, and their deviltry is aimed at none but you. Yes, guess who? You. It is aimed at you, the top light bearers on the planet, or those who should be. And sometimes we wonder when you think you are, but do not do the rituals to affirm that identity. Since you have forgotten that your time is all so short, I am here to remind you. I am here to tell you that the choices you do not make today for ultimate reality and kicking out that spoiled child and that self-indulgence may not be here tomorrow. Yes, I have said it. The choices may not be an option tomorrow. Therefore, cease to behave as spoiled children. Put that particular Halloween costume aside and enter in to the reality, the blazing reality of your personal Christhood, whereby you can make a difference not only to your own soul, which you will then and finally save, but to millions of souls. Let it be that you have heard the power of purity this day. For purity now shall speak to you of the calling in God, which is there for those who have eyes to see and those whose eyes who are dimmed. For the veil of indulgence and astral substance that you have allowed to cover them that you no longer see. I say, God pity you, God pity you, God pity you and give to Elohim another dispensation where you might truly see reality. Remember, you do not see reality because you will not see it, because you made a decision not to see it, because you are accommodating your self-indulgences. Let a people chosen of God then, let a people chosen of God choose their God this day, for the choice must be in both directions. 
To every call from on high, there must be an answer, and for every answer, there shall be the descent of light, when the individual can be trusted to hold that light. Thus I am purity, and I have spoken in Los Angeles on a number of occasions, on a number of occasions through the messenger Mark, through the messenger Elizabeth, and I have seen how the light of purity has been spat upon, has been challenged. I have seen the engines of anger and war in the unconscious of millions of people, yet I will not relent, for by the geometry of God of which we are all a part, there is the pressing in of light, there is the pressing in of light, and that light might as well be darkness, for when it comes upon the dark ones, so they cry out against the light and say, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth, son of the Most High God? What have we to do with thee, Thus the light is spat upon and spurned, and when the light is in you, so that does take place, doesn't it? And doesn't it take place? Every minute and every hour of the day, is there not someone somewhere upon earth who is doing that to your own messenger? And what does the messenger say? She says, so what? So what? Well, it is about time you said it too. If you are on a course for victory, if you know you are the best, if you know you are the winner and you are going to win, then I say go for it and have your victory, for it will take all of your Christhood, all of your great causal body, all of your I am presence, all of your soul, all of your love, all of your heart, all of your life. And when you have given all of that and fulfilled your round, God will give it back to you multiplied many 10,000 times 10,000 until you will see yourself in octaves of light having come through a planet saturated with a consciousness of death and hell where there was preserved for you an island of light with a canopy to cover it and an altar where a flame did burn as in ancient days of Atlantis and has not burned since except in a number of occasions numbering four or five since that time when the Maxin light went out and you will remember that you are in that island of the light and that flame did burn upon the altar and the word of God and the counsels of Elohim and the counsels of the ascended masters and archangels were not withheld from you, but you entered into those counsels and you did take counsel with the messenger and with those emissaries of the etheric retreats who have come to you almost physical in your midst, inspiring your minds with ways and means to beat the sinister force no matter through what agency of heaven or earth or death or hell. Yes, beloved ones, take on the challenge for whether you see them or not, the entire hordes of sinister force fling to you their challenge, dare you to make war against them, dare you to call for them to be bound and taken to the court of the sacred fire. Yes, they are daring you. And in a similar manner, in a positive way, all of the legions of angels and hosts of the Lord are in position and they challenge you to come into your Christhood and defeat those hordes multiplying by the microbes and viruses of which they are made. Yes, you have seen the photographs, the pictures, the drawings of those people so-called that come in spacecraft that have no real resemblance to human life. 
You have seen how they have degenerated, how they have no spark, no energy, no consciousness, but look somewhat like insects. Yes, beloved, this is what happens to an entire race when not a single son of God is willing to be upon the cross or to wear the crown beyond the cross. Yes, beloved ones, when there cease to be Christed ones in the earth, holding the balance for sons and daughters of God to embody, you may well see this become a barren planet for the neglect of the four lower bodies of the earth and the neglect of the four lower bodies of the people. And then what kind of offspring should come, off, should come forth? Those without the genes of the sons and daughters of God, those without the ability to procreate the light and to create the heart of fire that can contain a threefold flame. Yes, the evolutions of this planetary home could become dead sooner than you think for that which is taking place in the pollution of the earth and in all that that results from the misuse of nuclear energy. Yes, beloved, all of this affects the ability to continue the chain of life that does indeed go back to Adam and Eve, for those bodies given to Adam and Eve were the bodies that were given to all of their offspring, and you yet wear those bodies in some form this day. That has yet been preserved, but it is fast being contaminated beyond repair. Then, where will you be when the choice comes for Christhood? When you do not even have a physical temple that can be the temple of the Holy Spirit or the threefold flame or the crystal cord or blazing chakras? Right now, you have the means to transcend yourself right in the attachments that tie in to the physical body itself, spiritual centers, spiritual light, spiritual light, think of it, in every physical atom, in the sun of every cell, in every particle of life, there is yet that essence of Elohim. We have come to tell you that unless those who know as you know make a greater effort to embody the light of your God presence, there will be none to pass on. The long dispensations of the great white brotherhood that should and shall provide for those who come after you the bodies necessary to attain the victory of the ascension in the light. This dispensation, and you as a people mighty throughout the earth, you as the seed of Christ and Abraham, you as the seed of the great lights of history, your generation, your children, your lives shall determine the future of this earth as a viable place for the rescue of souls, their rebonding to Christ and their victory in God. Every example for the right is a magnetization of millions for that path. Every example for the left is the bringing down of civilization. You may scream at us and say, we do not want to hear all of this. We do not want to hear that we are responsible, that we are accountable, that we may no longer pipe our tunes to the ascended masters, and they will dance the moment we pipe our tunes. Well, we come with reality, for we are reality. We come with that God love, for we are that God love. We come with that God purity. We come with our circle and sword of blue flame, and we say, we love you with a love so profound. It is the love of the Father, Mother, God. 
We bow to the light that yet is in you, that is yet to become the conflagration whereby you may be saved for the ritual of the ascension. We come to bow to the resurrection fire of the spirit of the resurrection that does descend this weekend. And we say to you, with all of our heart's love, this is our message of Good Friday. Take it or leave it.